And good morning, everybody. I'm Paul Lisnick. Good morning. I'm Tamon Bradley. This is WGN TV Political Report. Illinois is now entering its fifth week under Governor J.B. Pritzker's stay at home order. Yeah, no word today if the order will be extended here as our neighbors in Wisconsin face a month long extension. In Washington, President Trump has walked back his claim to total authority over reopening the country. Instead, this week, he unveiled a three phase plan for states to determine how quickly they can loosen social distancing rules. The president is also asking for input from members of a congressional task force. One of them is Illinois Congressman Rodney Davis, who represents the 13th District, covers parts of central and southwestern Illinois. He's joining us live this morning to discuss what's next. Congressman, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you good morning. Are, yeah, you are part of the task force to uh, reopen the country, along with many others, a three phase plan. Just wondering if you can clarify for us what exactly are you guys doing? Because the governors are deciding what they want to do for their individual states. Are you looking beyond the three phases? No, we're looking to establish some communication. I mean, I, I will tell you, I was asked Wednesday to be a part of this task force. I'm proud to be the only Illinoisan in the House to be named to this task force to join our two senators. And really, it's about communicating about what's happening in our states, what's happening in our local areas. Uh, I was on a call the next day with the president, the vice president, many of my Democrat and Republican colleagues. And it was really uplifting to hear the conversations from some of my Democratic colleagues in states that have been harder hit than Illinois. Thank the president, thank the vice president. Talk about what we can do next to begin the process of reopening our economy. Congressman, the U.S. is currently testing 146,000 people per day, but researchers at Harvard suggest that the U.S. needs to test about three times that amount before we can safely reopen the country. We're talking about 500,000 to 700,000 people. That's what the science says. Shouldn't the country wait until we can test that amount of people per day before reopening? Well, I don't think it's bad to talk about reopening the country, and clearly there are areas. Look behind me. We can social distance with a lot of people just in my backyard. Those are the things in rural Illinois that are different than urban Illinois. And I think there's a plan in the, the president's three phases that were laid out. I think we're a good start to begin this discussion. Clearly, we ought to have an idea of what works in certain areas of our country and what doesn't. But the safety of every American is at the forefront of every single decision that we're going to make as a task force. So, Congressman, look, states are, are very different, of course, and it didn't take long for this virus to make its way from China and Europe and to get over here. The fact that people could catch this before they're even showing symptoms of it, does that give you any concern as the state or regions open up that people get infected again quickly and we've got to take a step back? Well, clearly we're going to have hot spots. We do. I, I'm in a rural county in Illinois that has had two senior living facilities ravaged by coronavirus. Uh, we've had four deaths in my, in my community, but our local officials working with state and public health officials quarantine those two facilities, so much so now that one is even out of quarantine and we've, we've effectively stopped the spread of the virus. That's what we can do when we work together. Those are the types of decisions that I think need to be made at the local level, the state level, but at the same time, we have to recognize that there are different parts of the country that experience much different uh, much different uh, infection rates than others. Now, keep in mind, my wife is a, a healthcare worker. She walks into a hospital every day that treats coronavirus patients. And those individuals that work at that facility, we've had zero infections. That means they're following the proper protocol. They're following the proper hygiene measures. Those are the things that are never going to leave this country because we've all now been conditioned to do those things differently than when coronavirus was non-existent. And we thank your wife for doing that work, as well as all of the health care workers who are being very brave right now. The Opening Up America uh, guidelines recommends isolation, testing, and contract, taste, uh, t um, contract tracing, I should say. How long until we can do that uh, in all 50 states and all of the U.S. territories? Well, clearly, we need to do better when it comes to testing. We need to, to get a better stockpile of personal protective equipment. It's bipartisan, by decade failure of the federal government, state governments, and local governments to recognize what it's actually going to take to address a pandemic that we haven't seen in our lifetime. But the time to Monday morning quarterback this is after we get this virus under control. And the good news is statisticians, researchers, scientists have said that we're going to see less infection rates 
because we've done the things that we've already accomplished. And when you look at these rates and you look at the phases that the president and the vice president and our task force have laid out, those are the talking points that we need to be able to communicate what's going to work here in downstate Illinois versus what's going to work in the Chicagoland area or other urban areas. You know, a lot of uh, business owners saying there have been glitches in the small business funding program. The president says it's working great. What are you hearing from businesses in your district about how effective this program has been? Now that it's out of money, we need Congress to uh, up the money again. Well, if it wasn't working, it wouldn't be out of money. Uh, I, I got to tell you, I've never seen any level of government, let alone the federal government, implement a program in such record time. We passed the law creating the program one Friday, and the following Friday, Secretary Mnuchin, Department of Treasury, the Administrator, and the SBA put together a program working with our local banks, credit unions, and other financial institutions to get started in a week. And it wasn't without kinks. But those kinks were being addressed as the program was being implemented, which is a far cry from what I've ever seen at the federal government level. So it's out of money. We need to get back to Washington. Speaker Pelosi is in charge of the House. She asked to have the Speaker's gavel in her hands. She needs to call us back and quit playing politics so we can re-up this successful program, help other areas like our hospitals, our medical facilities, re-up some of the money that's already been distributed to them. And then let's focus on getting this virus under control so we can reopen our economy and get back to that economic growth and historic low unemployment that all of us who've ever run for Congress, we promised the American people we would be there. And it was only a few short weeks ago we were there. The Illinois Senate President Don Harmon is asking Congress for $41 billion as part of the next uh, stimulus package. Is that amount of money doable, Congressman? Well, clearly, uh, Senator Harmon and, and the Democrats who have spent our state of Illinois into the ground are asking for money for problems that they've created over the decades. Uh, this is an issue that we're addressing with the state legislators. Uh, we certainly want to make sure that funds continue to come to our state and our local governments, and they have. As a matter of fact, uh, $13 million in the last week came to my district to help with our community health centers. Those funds are coming into Illinois. I just certainly wish the governor and, and the president and everybody would take a step back from sniping at each other uh, every once in a while. And let's Monday morning quarterback this thing after we get the virus under control and figure out what we didn't do right at all levels of government and make sure that it never happens again. Congressman Rodney Davis, be safe. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. And we're going to take our first break up next on WGN TV Political Report. You don't have to be an ep epidemiologist to see that the virus is going to hit our budget hard. The financial impact of the coronavirus crisis, plus more on the state of Illinois' ongoing response. And later, stopping the spread among Illinois' prison population, we're talking to advocates fighting for those inside one of the nation's top hotspots for coronavirus cases. Don't go anywhere.